You're watching the Peter Anthony Podcast with your host, the Mad Cuban. <laughs> What's going on? Well, hello. Hey, hey, how's it going? Did you do me a favor? Uh, check to see if we're live on Facebook because I always on uh, YouTube because I always do this, and for some reason yeah. on my end it never shows live. YouTube, it looks like it's okay. Okay, all right. I yeah, go I got it. One second, I've got to go there so I can answer comments. Got to mute this. Okay, I like the rock music. Yeah, I got the rock music in the background. I like it. It's good. Right, let's go here. So, right, back here. Sean Lutis there says hello. Whoa, That's Sean's it. here. Hey, Sean. I have no idea how to show a comment from YouTube on here. But, oh, okay. Uh, I know okay. I do it on StreamYard. That's okay. Well, wait. Yeah, I don't know what the hell's going on. Here we go. Comments. Here we go. I'm getting good now. Let's see it. There we hey! Go. Oh, four minutes. Is there really just three more minutes? No, now it's it's live. Oh, so. I got oh you. okay. <laughs> I'm new to the internet. I don't know how it works. Yeah, Ryan's been kicked off of Facebook, so he can't read anything from Facebook. Okay. Yeah. Eighties horror man who is Eric Smith, who really, really, really supports all of us and everything we do. Uh, says, "Hey, Peter, how's this going?" Hello, eighties horror. Oh. And then hi, eighties horror man. Jack Van Frossen. He was a gentleman that I was at the camp with. Great guy. Um, he was there. For, he got some. I don't know how many autographs he has on the Camp Crystal Lake original signed. Good guy. Right. Wow. Um, what else we got here? So these are all Jason fans, huh? Yeah. Well, you know me. So. And probably my mom. Come on. I hope your mom's on here. That'd be fun. <sighs> I know. I was like, do I send it live or I don't know. Who knows what I'll say? But she knows who I am. It's, it, she knows who you are. She hasn't seen the neck tat yet. Oh. I'm never good at math. I thought you were starting at 5 p.m. Wow. <laughs> Don't worry. We were confused, it's too, because okay, he kept saying 9. And we're like, okay, that's 7 o'clock our time. Yeah. Okay. So... If, if for Hi. people who don't know, let, let, let's get into it. So, from what I know from the gist, we'll, we'll start off, and then we'll we'll talk a little bit about it. Then we'll uh, we'll get into what your role is, Cody. What your role is, Ryan, and then we'll go into the cast. I have the whole cast lined up here, uh, not the people, but the pictures and what they're about. And I think people are going to be blown away by it. So, right. two fifty nine, Cody Newton, you are the director and the writer. Mm -hmm. Ryan Race is the DP. Is that correct? That director is correct. Producer. All right, so we're, if uh, Cody, if you want to jump first, or Ryan, whoever wants to jump first on what the origin of this story is and how it came about. Go for it, Cody. Oh, what? No, it's Cody. <laughs> Wait, this one. <laughs> okay, so uh, so 259, uh, Brian has always had this idea. He, he came up with a short film that we did. We did it in two, 2019. Here, pull uh, your mic away a little bit. You're, you're blasting us. Yeah. Well, I am so sorry. Thank you. Um, is that better? Yes. Okay. Um, so... 259 was a short film that we made in 2019 with my son. Uh, it was just a basic thing about a demon uh, haunting a kid every night at 259 and him trying to juggle life and a demon. Um, you know, I was kind of dabbling into horror. And and then we uh, we worked on a little movie, maybe you've heard of it, called Friday the 13th Roseblood. Excellent and, film. Uh, yeah, yeah I've, I've heard some great things about it. I haven't uh, watched it yet. Raved <laughs> reviews. <laughs> but... Uh, after we shot Roseblood in March of 2021, yeah. Yeah. we were driving home from Seattle to Boise, and Ryan told me the true story about 259. It wasn't just a, a, a little story about a demon haunting a kid. It was uh, a true story that he lived about a neighbor who was being possessed and, and all kinds of crazy stuff that happened. And from there, I uh, felt... A, a little darkness to it and uh felt that there was some a, a story to tell here and uh ryan has a bunch of the true story stuff if you want to hear some of that give him a little idea of what the story is right yeah a little bit <laughs> yeah i mean so i've always kind of you know i grew up watching like ghost shows never really experienced things like that <laughs> but um i've always just kind of been open to the idea of things like this happening and um when i moved up to um seattle or portland oregon 
um, with my ex, like 10 years ago, we both had kids, some strange things started happening. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm always a skeptic at first before I'm a believer. Usually I need someone to, you know, see the same thing that I saw and be like, did you see that before I really believe something? But we noticed that my next door neighbor was kind of crazy. Um, you know, we would be asleep and we'd start hearing fighting, you know, like real early in the morning between the hours of two and five in the morning. And finally it, it just got so bad that we went and visited. I, I had to go knock on the neighbor's door, you know, like at three 30 in the morning. And, uh, I, I saw this gentleman standing through the door who just creeped me out. Like he was looking right through me. He was shorter than me, but I was like nervous and scared. And, and, and we literally, shorter than you, bro. Yeah, I know. Right. And our yeah. doors were sharing like side by side, like an apartment. And, um, my ex was looking out the door, just like, talk to him, talk to him. And the next thing I know, the wife comes running in. I hear kids screaming and, you know, he's trying to shut the door. So I kind of stopped the door and it was kind of weird. I was, I told him like, dude, and I guess I'm going a little more in detail, but this is how it sets it up. And um, I'm like, dude, I don't know you. We just called the cops. You can take off. The cops are coming like whatever. Like, cause I'm not trying to start a war with my neighbors. So anyways, the next day they're like, Hey, we want to invite you guys over for dinner. We're so sorry how this happened. And we just got to talking and, and, you know, stories tend to pop up and we got into like demons and ghosts and they kind of looked at each other and gave this weird look. And then they started talking about like um, demons and being scratched and that um, all his life he had strange people walk up to him, tell him that there were spirits following him. And from there on out for over the next course of two months, just crazy stuff started happening. Stuff that to this day, like it gives me chills even just thinking about it and some of the things that we saw. So we kind of incorporate a lot of those stories. I don't want to give too many of them away because um, we want you to see them however they are in the film. And actually what was fun is when we were doing the table read, it was pulling me right back to these memories. Of course, we've embellished some of these stories. We've taken some of the stories and split them up over multiple days to make a movie work. But um, it, it was it was a pretty wild story. And in my end, you know, you heard where it started with Cody. But with me, I kept thinking about this, kept thinking about this. Even when I moved home, I kept thinking about it. And, and one day in the rain, it was raining and I just grabbed my son. I'm like, dude, let's ride up the street on your bike. I pulled out the drone. Nothing special. Flew the drone in the rain, filmed him kind of running in. And I just threw it on my hard drive, forgot about it. And I think fast forward another year and a half. That's when I ran into Cody. And, uh, you know, we just kind of, when you're on set, you talk about things. You're always talking. To, it's funny how when you're on a movie, you're always talking about the next movie. And then the next movie you're going to write. It's, you're never really present in the movie. I mean, we act like we are, but sometimes we're not. But um, I kind of told him about this little idea. And one thing kind of led to another, which led to the short. And to me, it's really interesting to how something can start off. And, and at the time when I first started doing this, I really wasn't in film. I was still DJing. I was a DJ in my past life and really not big in a film. But it's weird how this little teeny mustard seed or mustard seed has turned into, you know, filming the actual movie next month. And I got to thank Cody Newton for that. And it's just it's 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 a, an adventure and a trip. But so let me let me ask you a question. Um, when you were saying the general, this is pretty fascinating. Yeah. You guys never told me this story. I, I just had a gist of, you know, because because Ryan, for people who don't know, is kind of quiet and. That's probably the longest I've ever heard him fucking talk in my life. I've been on so, set all day. I've been talking all day long. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he's joking about stuff. He's usually, he, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. always joking. So, yeah. so explain to me when you say he was in the doorway, I, I'm assuming you're saying like he didn't know he was him. He was possessed or something was wrong no, with him. Well, I mean, you're not going to open the door and be like, man, this this guy's possessed. I'm just thinking right. this is just like a crazy dude. I thought he was on drugs. But that's you what know? you're alluding to, that something was. Yeah, I thought he was just on drugs or something because he was literally just open the door. He's heavy breathing. And he was just like staring at me. He's like, what? And I'm like, hey, man, we heard some arguing and fighting. And then instantly that's when the wife came over and was like, help us, help us, help us. And I'm just like, oh, shit. So, like, I just kind of, like, grabbed him, pulled him outside and just, hey, stay away from your family for a minute. The cops are coming. And I was worried he was going to, like, stab me, swing on me, try to fight me. So I was just like, bro, you could just, like, leave. Like, the cops are coming. Just leave and come back later. Like, we'll figure out. And the crazy – what the first thing that made it really feel weird – where I was like, what the hell's going on with this guy was we were inside their house when the cops showed up and the cops were taking statements. And all of a sudden, like 10 minutes later, he just strolls in through the back sliding glass door. And he was like, Hey guys, what's going on? Like he had no clue what was going on. I'm like, is this guy like on drugs? Cause like, he's just like almost wanted to fight me 15 minutes ago. And then here he is walking through the screen door, not knowing he's like, why are the cops here? And they're like, sir. And they like grab him and kind of pull him off to the side. He's like, What's going on? What I do? What I like? He had no clue what was going on. Did the wife seem like used to this? Um, we after once the cops kind of got there and he showed up, 
I was just kind of like, I had that vibe, like, oh, this guy's going to shoot up everybody. We need to go home. And so we just kind of said, hey, if you need anything else, you know, we're right next door. And it was kind of weird. We were like, oh, man, like, what if this guy's crazy? But they, like I said, they came over. We, we were in condos. So he actually, we share patios kind of. And he actually just came into the grass and knocked on our back door. So it's not like we could hide underneath the couch or something. He saw us sitting on the couch. And him and his wife were there. And they're like, hey, we want to apologize for yesterday. You know, so we were just like, okay, maybe it was just, we've all had drunk nights. You know, maybe not that but, wild but did his crazy. wife know that he was possessed? At oh, that yeah, 100, 100%. That's yeah, what they've saying. they've so been dealing with this, this for a while. Yeah, okay. actually, what was really weird was they used to live in an apartment in the same building just further over. And they said it wasn't until they moved into that apartment where all this crazy stuff started happening. So they'd been dealing with it for probably five or six months by the time I met up with them. So this was this was like a family home evening night for them. They were they were used to this stuff, um, but it was it was new to us. Wow. And then that's why I said the next day, that's kind of when they told us, they showed us some pictures of him with scratches on his body. And so that's why I said, I'm always a skeptic first. Cause I was like, okay, yeah, that's crazy. That's scary. But I'm like, okay, they're just scratching themselves. So he scratched I, himself. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it wasn't until I saw it personally happen. Um, that's when I really was like hooked. I'm like, okay, there's something wrong with this guy. And then Cody, uh, Cody's uh, uh, a man of faith for sure. And uh, so this, this I know would probably perk your interest, but you probably had some reservations too. What would, you know, all the horror movies, all the things you see, what would make you really delve into this and want to make a movie? What made you a believer basically in this? Well, uh, exactly what happened to Ryan right there. When he saw something happen to this guy that he couldn't explain, where does Ryan go to be able to find the answers to fight this thing? That's the, That was the burning question in my mind. And that's where the script really dives into it uh, because when we were driving when he started to tell me that's this story i was like i was getting anxious and i never get anxious i i started to feel those hairs in the back of my head i felt that there was a dark spirit and because i'm a, fa a, a person of faith you know i i could discern that these things not only were not good that they were driven by like an evil spirit but they were true and so uh we were driving and driving and driving. I thought we were going to hit a deer. I, I, it was I, a I was, wild ride home. Yeah, we actually, and uh, my GPS starts zooming in and out, going rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. And I'm going, I, that thing has never done that before in its entire T. And uh, we hit a deer carcass. <laughs> yeah, I kept telling him, like, I feel like our tire is going to pop. I feel like we're going to get in a crash. Yeah. All these weird things while we were driving home. And it was but, oddly dark that night, too. And I was, uh, and I could, I, and I could feel that there was, there was something else there. And so we stopped, we, we used, we used the bathroom. We stopped, we got back in the car. I had a, a second to think about it. And Ryan got in the car and I was like, Ryan, okay, there's two things I need to say to you. First of all, this is a very marketable story. That's this, what I would have said. This yeah. is something yeah. that could be told. Yeah. I mean, I could see it visually play out. I think it's very interesting. Um, but the second thing I said to him, I said, Hey, if we're going to do this, uh, we need to pray. And so we, uh, you know, and, and it's a little strange, you know, two guys, uh, hey, let's let's say a prayer together. Uh, but we prayed and we immediately, we felt better. It, it, it was interesting because then we started talking about, hey, what do you believe in and how would you, how did you fight this thing? You know, I brought in my Christian side. He brought in uh, everything that he's learned. You know, he was talking about using crystals and, and uh, Reiki and all, and all kinds of different things. And I'm and, raised Mormon too, so I mean, we were mm -hmm. obviously clicking on that level too. But uh, I have written that into the script as uh, through the eyes of the kids. Where do you go when you fight your demons? You know, do you right. go to Christ? Do you go to witchcraft? Do you go to science? Where do you go? You know, and there's actually those three characters where they have to figure out how to fight this demon. And yeah. that's really where it was interesting for me. And that's why I thought, you know, I feel like I'm, me I'm meant to tell this story. That's great. Uh, real quick, I just want to say thanks to the fans. Uh, Bacon Pew Pew, what's going on, buddy? Um, What's up, Bacon? Methodical Eyes, another quality interview happening with Peter. Thank you so much. That means a lot. Uh, I'm just as good as a quality because of who I'm interviewing. Uh, yeah. Clapping Hands by oh. Miss Brawling Beauty. Okay. And look at this right here. The producer, Sean Lutis, with a $50 oh. super sticker. Oh, hey. oh man. Look Thank you. Extra crafty. Yeah. <laughs> like another two days now, buddy. Thanks so yeah. much, man. You Thanks, don't have sir. to do that. 
It, Sean Lutz, by the way, is uh, is he executive producer? Is he producer, executive producer? What's his title? So he's he's both. I think he's he's been an executive producer on a lot of things. But I made sure when I talked to Sean because this is, is starring his daughter Sanaya, and I, I wanted to make sure because I've worked with Sean enough here, and he right. just he he works so hard, and he just doesn't have the pull that I think he should, and so. I, he is a straight on producer on this one. And so if he does think that s something needs to change or something needs, you know, he definitely has the power to do that. Whereas the executive producer really doesn't have that power. Um, real, real quick, we got some family. By the way, are you noticing that my screen is flickering? A little yeah. bit. That's never it's, happened. because we're talking about this stuff, it's, man. Dude, I'm I was going to tell you, I'm weird. haunted. That's I always tell people I'm haunted. Show. Yeah. No, I, I literally I interviewed a medium and we started talking about the demon that she fought and and lights started flickering and it's so it's incredible some of the stuff that happens once you actually are like in this realm of thinking about it. so uh i robert, just call it my daily life so. robert race the horror oh, no. the horror who's robert that's, that, that's my father <laughs> mr race how you doing i never met you sir but good to, yeah. thanks for jumping on the show robert dude. race is played by uh one of our friends oh really who was in rosebud yeah well, we'll i don't think robert knows that and then uh harmony race yep. this is ryan's mom when he told yeah. me what was going on, I was terrified for Ryan. Hello, Miss Race. I'm terrified because I'm like, oh, she's going to hear how I really talk to my friends. <laughs> Miss Race, yeah, if right. you ever see a Marco Polo to Ryan and I'm on it, please don't listen. <laughs> right. uh, he said the Hi, horror... Harmony. Hi, Robert. Well, without a lies, well-deserved. Keep up the great work and content. You're very, very welcome. Uh, 80s Horror Man. Sanaya is a very good actress. Love and respect her work in Rosebud Vengeance 1 and Vengeance 2. Thank you so much. That's man. awesome. She's got well, some that's great good, movies coming Sanaya, up, too. Yeah. Sanaya is, uh, she is, uh, well, unless we get another actor who I'm trying to get, she is top billing on this one. And we are, I mean, we're, she is, she's the, the character you want to watch to see if, you know, what she does. Yeah. Well, let, let, let's go through this. We'll spend maybe a minute because there's a lot here, and we One want, don't, want, don't want to get boring with the show. But if you would like to elaborate, bang, we have Sanaya Lutis. Hold on, let me take away that private. Wait, I'm terrible with this. Comments. Let's hide that for there one minute. Go. Sanaya Lutis as Kaylee Winward for mm -hmm. two fifty nine. So if you could explain uh, her role in the film briefly. So she plays. So we have a character named Ryan, who who is Ryan. But uh, Kaylee plays Ryan's daughter, even though in real life Ryan has a, a son, Quentin. And he was about seven at the time. Yeah. So, some other top billing. I mean, people just saw this one happen the other day, and that is Mr. Terry uh, Tyson yeah. himself so, as Robert Winward. So, so as Robert Race, technically. <laughs> Correct. I, I'm figuring that out. Th that's a great. I saw you post that the other day. As you know, one of my favorite human beings. Just talked to him on the phone today. I tried to get him as a special guest. You want? You want to uh, hear the answer? Yeah. You want to hear the answer? I go, hey, Miss Mister Kaiser. He's like, what do you want, old man? He calls me old man. Yeah. So, uh, and I go, I would love to have you as a special guest with Ryan and so and so. He goes, that's great. It's just audio, right? And I'm like, no, no, no. We we got to get you on. He goes, Peter, Denver's on in the finals of the NBA. Oh yeah. I, oh, I yeah. am nude. And my hair is not done, and I'm not getting dressed. I said, okay, go. sorry, we'll get you another time. We could have brought <laughs> yeah. him on still. <laughs> the sound baits I get from that guy are, like, legendary. Awesome. Yeah, he's, he's one of my favorite people to work with, for sure. Uh, ever. And uh, so Terry Kaiser plays basically Robert Race, correct? Yeah. Yep. I don't think my dad knows that yet, either. He oh, doesn't. <laughs> no. How awesome is that? Another top billing for those, most of my fans are horror fans, and they'll know this gentleman. This is the only gentleman that played in Friday the 13th, the TV series, and a movie, which was part nine, which is John LeMay mm -hmm. as Jesse McKenna. Now, Ryan, I know you met him when you did an interview for Adam Marcus for his uh, Hearts of Darkness. If you could explain your relationship with him me. and who, he, who he's playing. Yeah, I was going to say, not, not Scotty. Yeah, I, I met sorry, him. Cool. He, he actually lives in Boise. I live in Boise also. And so he's kind of he's kind of in the film scene. He's seen what I've done, but uh, he... Uh, I guess he, he watched Roseblood. Roseblood was the one, and he's like, hey, what? wait, what is going on? What are you guys doing? You're making these movies? These things are awesome. Uh, and so he had to shoot. Just made my it day. was kind of during COVID or whatever, and uh, he had to do his section of The Heart of Darkness, which is a, a Indiegogo doc that they're doing for on Part 9. And I went, and I, I shot the crap out of it, I felt like. And he was so happy with what we did. Um that uh, we we went to lunch and we've we've been in contact the whole time 
Uh, real quick here for the fans, 80s Horror Man, Tara Kaiser is a legend, a very funny guy. Before that, Harmony said hello. Hello again. This is pretty cool. Jack Van Frozen, the gentleman I was at at the Friday 13th camp. As a true horror fan, we all owe you guys for giving us new content. In an age where no one comes up with original ideas in the motion picture industry, thank you. Wow. Thank that's you, guys. guys. So that, that's that's amazing. Well, keep then, watching so we can do Not really more. original. It's yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> and then, Ryan, um, you, were, you were wondering if your father knows, and he knows now. There you, know. you go. Terry Kaiser, the legend. I mean, Rob is yeah, like well, he's, he's six huge. foot six too. Yeah, yeah. Six Terry's, six? Terry's yeah. yeah, same as me, but lost stock here. Yeah. Terry's what, like five seven? <laughs> yeah. It works. Um, uh, back to the. Oh wait, let me. I gotta learn that. Um, I have to take that off. One second. Man, I'm terrible with this. You're getting better though. Yeah, so brand. Uh, another top billing person, as far as name wise, is this gentleman who we recognize from Vengeance 2, Richie Ramone, as Soren the Claremont. Richie Ramone, if anybody doesn't know, is part of the Ramones, which is one of the biggest bands ever. I would say probably the first big American pop uh, or punk band ever in, in America yeah. for punk for America. I know in, in England it's a different story, but yeah. if you can explain his character. So uh, Richie was so fun to work with, and he just hung out half the time. I mean, it was just yeah. it felt really cool to just hang out with Richie Ramone. Uh, but what he did on screen was he he did very little. He didn't have a lot of scenes, but man, he kind of stole the show. And his kill is one of my favorites. His his moment with uh, Kelly right before is, is one of my favorites too. And yeah. so as you can see behind me, I had asked people, "Hey, who who who's interested in being in 259?" Because I was writing it. And I got all kinds of people who said, hey, I'd love to be a part of it. But Richie reached out. And I was like, oh, my goodness, where could I use Richie? So I wrote him in as a, a psychic, uh, a medium that comes yeah. in and, and perfect talks about the house. But yeah. but once he accepted the role, I like, oh, man, I have to have a bigger moment for him later. So he, he I, I put in almost twice as much because he's joining us. And he, uh, I mean, he went and bought his tickets already i mean he's he's super excited and that yeah, excited, so excited people make him. me excited is, is yeah. he as mad cool as he seems he's yeah. so cool yeah. he yeah. just oozes cool man good yes. yeah he's so fun uh, to talk to and hang out with um and speaking of icons if we're talking about the fan film world and we're talking about monsters and if we're now talking about fx i mean for me there's one guy to play jason obviously he's been in my jason in every single film it's this gentleman right oh, here uh, jason brooks the immortal Jason Brooks, the entity. Uh, you can't talk about better casting. You can't get better than him. By the way, I'm not going to mention it, but he's working on the entity, which I saw what it looks like, and holy shit. Yeah, I don't it, know if he it's pretty through. amazing. Yeah. It, 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 well, the fun thing about Jason is, uh, I mean, not only is he in it, like completely when he's acting but man behind the camera he's doing all the special effects it's tim and his team and it just we are so lucky because we're getting hollywood style special effects you know for for the rates that you know we got paid for on vengeance too you know, that type of thing so yeah. super excited about that he's really excited about doing the demon um and his team is i mean i don't think i'd go anywhere without them at this no, point with any movie. Never. It, 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 him and, and Naomi and, and their team, I mean, every day, I'm not just saying that because I'm friends with them, they get better and better and better oh. every day. J Jason Brooks is literally talking about cool people, literally one of the coolest guys ever. I'm probably going to die like in my 60s because of the energy expenditure that I have, but Jason Brooks can work just as hard as me, just at that like low Calm level. level. Yeah, it's yeah he's always calm. It's like, Jason, the house's on fire. Well, we'll get to it, man. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> and I, I'm just amazed too because like, 259 the, the short we had this little mask for my buddy nick that we borrowed that was really cool and you know when we were building and this mask is actually on his instagram page if you want to check it out too um it's something we haven't really been hiding because it's not necessarily the main point of the movie but um just seeing from the movie the, the mask that we had in the short to what he's created oh. it's just it blows my mind it's and, and, yeah we, we don't even really we didn't we didn't know that he could create this stuff and that's yeah. that's the amazing part that's yeah. the amazing part about Jason is you whatever project you give him, art he can nail it. Like remember when he did uh, the Vengeance Two, the Mother's Shrine, and all that. I don't know yeah. if he was Mark. He marked me and Sean that day. There was a space, and then there was the whole thing, yeah. and it's just amazing. His 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 artistic talent. Like I I like to think I can I work pretty hard. I can work for forty years. I can't do what he does in one week, dude. Right. His yeah, talent I, level is a different level for art. I, I assume he's some he's some kind of savant. That, that's, yeah, that's, that's the only way I can say it. Yeah. yeah. 
All right. So this gentleman here, I don't know this gentleman, so you're going to have to elaborate on not only his character, but him. Kevin Caliber. Is that correct? Yeah. Kevin. As, as Ryan himself. Look at Ryan, that good looking bastard. I mean, it's it's like looking into a mirror. I mean, <laughs> especially when his shirt's off, it's just dead, mm -hmm. dead on. Yeah. <laughs> So Kevin's one of my favorite people. Uh, he actually auditioned in my last feature film, which was a rom-com, but he was just a little bit older than what we had cast the female as. And so I was like, ah, oh, dang it. I'd like to use uh, Kevin. He was in Future Man. I don't know if you know Future Man. It was on Hulu. Yeah. Um, it was a Seth Rogen show. Uh, he played Wolf's 80s like volleyball dude. He, he was in quite a bit of episodes, but he's a, he's a fun character. He's a bodybuilder. And uh, he, he has just just the right amount of quirkiness and uh, handsomeness, you know, that Ryan has. And, and right. when I when I thought of him, I thought, oh, this is perfect casting because not only is he gonna he have you know that that fun personality and energy, but man, he he looks good. And yeah, he does take off his shirt off a couple times. Right. Um, real quick here, uh, 80s Orman, Jason Brooks is the man. One of my favorite Jasons. That's yeah, awesome. he's saying I mean, one it, of the favorite Jasons out of all. Right, and that's unbelievable because the, the films that he's been in are, have all been under a hundred thousand dollars made. I mean, and that's under seventy five thousand dollars. Under seventy five thousand dollars made. Yeah, goodness. Yeah. And then look at this. Look at this guy right here. Oh, yeah, dude. 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 What's up, dude? Oh, the Duke is in the house. Yes. Hey, I, I was trying to get him on. There's about six people that I was supposed to have on for this. And no one wanted to hang out with either of us. Okay, I, I see how it's the game. <laughs> yeah, probably my fault because I'm so last minute with stuff. But uh, Q, we, we talked about it. One more here before we get to the next character. Splatterblade. Big shout out to Sean for fifty dollars donation. I agree. Wow. Mm -hmm. By the way, do you guys know who that character is right there? No. That is Blade from. Um, oh my God, Puppet Masters, which is like there's like. Oh 20 yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember that yeah. show. Back in the day. Uh, now that we've me, so you, that's what's right. funny too is me and Cody until we started until we did Roseblood, we've never really watched horror movies. We were never into this slasher stuff. So we're still learning, but it's definitely growing on me. Yeah. Um and it, it's just kind of fun to Oh yeah. Q reviews. Whoa, five yeah. dollar donation. The family is back together. Yeah, I hope it's crazy. a slow one. <laughs> yeah. I from the movie, uh, cute. That, that's movie. someone we got to cast in one of our movies coming up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I got, I got him in laugh. He, he's in a club. I just got to get him in there. Club scene. Oh yeah. 100%. Okay, cool. Um, so when, we got to change the banner now because we've added some people. So we are going to change this banner. Look at this. We're getting high tech around here. So the next person kind of looks like someone on this show. A little Tanner. And a little happier than normal. And I think that's Diego hey. Newton. Oh, look at that kid. Yeah. Mason yeah, Montoya. Look at that yes. guy. It's like Cody with a tan with some yeah, hair. Right. It's yeah. Puerto Rican me. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> so tell me about the decision of casting your son. Because I know that, you know, people will be like, oh, you're just doing it because you're your son. But I know he's acted before. And what? It, why'd you cast him and explain the role? So he, he he's acted. Well, he acted in the original, first of all. Uh, so I know that he has a range. I know how to how, how to direct him pretty well but uh there was a point in time when he didn't want to do this movie uh yeah, and yeah. and i was like man okay let me let me try and recast and i started to search for some people and i was like man i'm literally casting someone who ex is exactly like tiago so why would i you know why would i do that so he warmed up to it a little bit um and i think I now he's, he's, times. yeah he yeah. sees the script now that we see the script he he gets it you know before it's just me talking gibberish about him fighting a demon or whatever but yeah. he loves doing stunts and that's the big thing he's been in he was in metal kingdom he was in uh my eric's in the void he likes doing stunts and so we do have some wire work we have some stunts in here it's actually going to be pretty fun for him but yeah. the big thing is me, he's reminds me of me when i was he's a good athlete i seen him dunking the yeah. basketball yeah. pretty easy and i used to have ups believe it or not i know i'm a fat old guy now i don't have any <laughs> ups. i was known for like my ups just like you with the arms and cody kong but not right. anymore um no, um, he's it started with him like we we didn't even start writing this or thinking about doing the movie until we knew he he said yes mm -hmm. so it started it, with him let me ask you, when you direct right. him, do, do you how is your approach is it the same as rosebud where at times you're gonna be like dismissive and we're getting it done is are you a total ass like i am at times or are you the dad on set when you direct it i'm definitely not the i'm not the dad uh okay. i i don't I mean, there's a little bit of tolerance, but most of the time we are both on the same team trying to achieve the same goal. Yeah. So there's a scene in 259 where he had to, he just has to sit there and just start crying. 
And, uh, you know, I challenged him with uh, certain ways to be able to do it. I kind of told him my ways and whatever, and and he nailed it. It was great. He has one line in the whole thing, and, and he starts to cry, and he won. I think he won several awards for yeah, acting for that 259 short. Wow. So just yeah. knowing how to connect with my kids, it makes me just so much uh, easier to direct. You know? Yeah, I begged him a few times too on social media, and then when I came up to Idaho, I was like, I, I'm like, man, you, ha I kind of like pull him apart, I'm like, boot, we just have to get this done. I need you. I, you, you're the perfect person for this role, and just kind of like warmed him up. It probably wasn't me, but I mean, it was a combination of us. But I mean, I really threw like the long ball when I saw him in person. I'm like, come on, man. It, um, real quick, Flash Tamer Productions. This is the gentleman, Maurice McCoy, who's making the uh, Jason film after Rosebud. That's a multiverse. Okay. So he says, hey, fellas. And then, hey, how's it um, going? Splatterblade. Uh, Blu-rays. Every single perk has been sent out. Uh, Blu-rays, there's probably 300 left. So there's only so many I could do Still a day. Still waiting on mine. <laughs> yeah, I just sent it today. There's only so many I could do a day, and I got to make it right. So I apologize. Yeah. Thank you for your patience. He's Talk a one-man bad. It's taking him some time. I, I watch his process all the time. He's like, I'm still in my room putting stickers on DVDs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, talking shit. He, they just had Cody on the other day. Yeah. And Peter, uh, Cody, and Ray. And Mark O'Brien. I assume it's Mark. Yeah. Um, and then the banner's there. So, oh, question back to um, Diego. Yes. Um, as we get older, we all have loss. And I think for me, being a non-emotional, used to be a non-emotional guy, the, the more loss you have, for me, it's easier to draw from that loss. Him being younger, I would think, is a lot harder for him to do it. It's more like a talent than like just thinking of something. Is he like recalling something that bothered him, or he's just acting it? No, he's actually just acting. So when I talked about it, and this is one of my favorite moments that I had with Diego after that night, because we filmed it, and we got into the car, and we started driving home, and he goes, I think I nailed it. Did I nail it? And I was like, dude, you freaking nailed it. And, and I go, well, what was your process? And he said... Well, um, I thought about my character's mom, and, and at the end of the movie, I'm taken, I, I'm gone. And I thought about my mom finding, not finding me again. You know, his character's mom not finding him, and that's what brought him to tears. And that's the best way to do it, I personally think. he yeah. It was character-driven, and he was there as his character and felt that emotion of, this, of the moment. Yeah. Speak, speaking of emotion... Man, I miss you guys. Family. Oh, it's true. We'll be back yeah. soon. Hey, yeah, we got we got some fun stuff, especially laugh coming up. I mean, that that'll be a lot of fun, especially if you're there. But Q, yeah. we, we got to talk because there's I have some more stuff coming up. Yeah, Q, he's great. He, he, you know what's great about Q? He's himself. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's 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 easy for for him. So all right, let's go back to uh, no Billings. Brand. So there's another person here that I do not know you're gonna have to i've never seen this actress before if you can elaborate holland stull this as holland desta, stull. desta mckenna can you explain her and her role yeah she uh the stoles are, are on the movie she, uh, production designer and assistant director uh holland has been in a lot of my movies uh yeah. she was in crimson butcher she came down with, with us in the rise there. of crimson butcher okay, okay. and, oh, and kind of stole never the know. acting show in that movie mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, she's been in all kinds of stuff, uh, Alien Storm, and uh, what's our know. what's the little one that we did with the the flowers? I I can never remember the name. Yeah, a, a fun little you know Father's Day movie called For Jane. Oh I mean, yeah, she's, that's that's a great one. I she's still been growing up time. acting, but she's one of the best actors in Boise, and she actually plays uh, the witch character, the person who practices witchcraft and tries to get rid of the demon through through that. So that's the trifecta of of, of kids is. Sanaya, Tiago, and Holland, and they are they're gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, that's cool. Q Q's said, down. He's down. And then <laughs> he, this is great. This is what I want to do the show for. Good cast lineup for the movie 259. Looking good. I'm looking forward to seeing the movie. So am I. Oh, there's still um, a lot more great cast coming, too. Let, let before we jump into the last three, let me ask you a question. Because mm -hmm. normally, when you guys, by the way, you guys have done I don't know how many films you could tell me together. Um, normally Cody is a DP and Ryan race is one of the cameramen. And in this role now, Ryan is the DP as Cody is the director. So I don't know if you've done that before and how is it going to be uh, changing the roles for this film? Are you guys working together? But nothing changed. Real, this is yeah. actually more normal. Yeah, I was because say, I, you want the real answer? <laughs> like, yeah, this is what we've been doing. But sometimes we just right. throw titles at certain places. It's just a title. Yeah. 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 And I've directed, well, I mean, it does change. Like, I, yeah, it I does. don't like being next to the camera 
dictating all that stuff when I'm directing actors and when I'm directing my movie. So uh, it really does help me that I have someone who I can trust and I, I know exactly he's going to get the right shots. Uh, most of my best films that I've directed have all been uh, Ryan's work as the DP. Yeah. You, so, you know what? I have a question now that I'm a director and I, you know, kind of see the way shots are being done. Ryan is so tall that I'm wondering, and it it works perfect for Rosebud, especially the kills of Jason, because Ryan's so tall. He's, he's taller than Brooks, as tall as Brooks with the costume on. We're kind of getting a down look of when Jason's killing everyone, and it works. But I was wondering, does his height ever hinder you? Do you tell him to get down on the bio? No. The box, remember when shot? dude fell through the door after Jason threw him in Rosebud? That was my shot, too. I was on the ground. I can go <laughs> higher low. Does Cody ever? Does it's just Cody slow to get up because of my bad knees. <laughs> well, the good thing is you have you have the choice between high and low. If you have a short person, yeah. you only have the choice of right. low. Right. But do you ever tell him we want it low here? Yeah, all the yeah, time. Awesome. Yeah. So the, what's really good about Ryan, especially his camera operating, is he is a dancer, and so he has a fluid movement to him. So most of my movies that I do, it's on a dolly, and it just has this beautiful movement to it. Even in the Einreichen. Uh, we were doing this like rainbow roll where he has to turn and push at the same time. He's he's great like that. Yeah, methodicalized. Thank you so much. Hey, 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 thank you for the donation. Here. Appreciate Woo! you. So much. This is really helping out. And then well, I appreciate it. And then one more look at this here. Q review went on and oh, on about how good. great Spider Verse Two was. I, I don't know if you guys have seen. It. I have. Not. Yeah, I watched it with my son first night. Was it as good as he says? Um, it's a part one. So what do you mean? I I part two. Say. It's 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 a, it's, it's a middle two, sequel. One. Yeah. It's a trilogy. Oh, I got you now. I got mm. you now. Ryan was chilling on the ground in Rosebud. Great job. Yeah, under, under the shed. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Wild <Right>. stories. <laughs> uh, let me remove that one. What, what, one more. One more. Yeah, methodicalized. You guys are giving me some great insight. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Yeah, we're happy to answer any questions. I mean, this, yeah, this is, yeah, this is like, making this is hard. Like, this is like cousins getting back together at a family picnic. That's, I know, that's right? how we all are. Never, we like we like each other more than cousins, man. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean we <laughs> spent true. Marco Polo every day to both of you. Yeah. All right, yeah. we got about three more, and I'm only going off the ones you've announced on your site. So if there's right. any more, we can talk about it at the end. But this lovely lady I have not seen before, uh, okay. Anna Camacho as Elena Montoya. Yay. Yep. And so. Uh, Anna played uh, the mom in the original short, and I don't think there's any. I don't think I ever thought about anybody else in the she cast. She plays a mom. She looks young as hell, right there. She she looks really young in that picture, but she's in her. I'm not going to say how old she is, but she's okay, old yeah. enough to be Tiago's mom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Granted, uh, in the short, also. Tiago looked like he was eight, so you know it <laughs> yeah. definitely worked then. <laughs> yeah, but she's uh, definitely my age, and uh, she's great. She's one of Boise's uh, hidden gems because she yeah. doesn't get to do too much stuff. The funny but thing is, she, she, she looks up Spanish so much. She looks like she could be Diego's mom. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. That's why yeah. we love it. Yeah. Then we got everybody's favorite sweetheart, uh, our tattooed beauty, Amber Brooke oh. as Heather Gerard. I I didn't hey. even know Amber was on the film, man, until I went through your page to do some research. I'm like, oh my god, Amber, he got yeah. Amber on. Is that another what one of my actors? Do I have to sue you now, or how does that? How does that? I don't think you owe money. us money. Yeah, right. you do. A, that was our actor. <laughs> yeah, I'm, 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 I'm sorry, Jason. I forget what the rules are. You know. So um, Amber, yeah. uh, after the release, of, I mean, she was so excited about Vengeance Two, and and the sad part is she just had a little part. But I loved her in the cabin scene. She has a lot of personality, but like I said, I like excited people, and she was so excited about doing stuff, and she fits this part perfectly because. You, you kind of see how everyone's, uh, you know, a little clean cut, cut and whatever. Uh, that she plays Ryan's girlfriend. Um, oh, that's perfect. Not like, not like the real uh, person who was uh, his girlfriend at the, at the time, just because they're way different. And she had a daughter, but uh, yeah, she'll be perfect in this role. And and especially when a lot of the weird stuff happens, uh, she, she'll be right in there, and she's going to be a lot of fun. And you know, we had to make sure that she's covered in blood at some point because she looks good in blood. She does. Mm -hmm. She does. And I know this lady. I, I was in the morgue with her, and I've seen her several times during over the Vengeance One and especially the Vengeance Two shoots. And that's Laura Hunter. Oh yeah. Melissa McKenna. Um yeah. if you oh, could yeah. explain her. Top. Yeah, if you could explain yeah. her and her role. Laura's good. Well, Laura's been acting for like 15 years. She did all kinds of pageants. She is the CEO of Tori Bell Cosmetics. And so Tori Bell is actually sponsoring this whole shoot also and providing all of the makeup for us. And oh. so um I I love what she did. She plays uh, the witch's mom 
uh, Holland's oh, yeah. mom. So, uh, and she is John LeMay's uh, wife. Okay. So, uh, excited to have her. Like I said, I love having excited people. She has been, uh, she's always been asking, hey, how's it going with 259? Mm -hmm. um, are there any parts? And I honestly, it was a perfect part for her. So, we cast her as, as Melissa. Excellent. Before I, I go on, um, is there any, because that's all I saw on your site, is there anybody else that you haven't announced or that you would like to talk about? Um, there is one person we need to announce uh, eventually. I'm waiting for yeah. the right time because we're looking into uh, certain, you know, paperwork and stuff like that, but Darcy DeMoss is going to be in this uh, film because she's one of my favorite people ever and God. she plays a character named Lady Moreau who comes to the house to try and clean the spirit, but she does it for pay. And, you know, she she brings pageantry it's, to it's what funny. she does. I love it. Kind of like the, um, the shorter lady in Poltergeist? Kind of like um, the shorter lady in Poltergeist, but yeah. uh, more for show. <laughs> Let's just yeah. put it that way. I, I, Darcy posted a picture the other day. I'm like, she's Benjamin Button. She gets yeah. younger and better looking like every year. I don't even understand yeah. how she does yeah. it. Oh, and, and Darcy is my is my it's favorite Friday the Thirteenth girl. I, there's something about her actually not being nude that I think makes me like her more. But she's she's beautiful. I watched Can't Buy Me Love recently, and she is she is so gorgeous in it. Yeah. Um, but more than anything, it is her energy that really just fit perfectly and fits us on set too. So. Mm -hmm. Hundred yeah. percent. Super spunky, like always happy. Yeah, Pretty always happy. full life. Great person to be on set. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Super great um well, loves to know, promote everything we love that too yo yeah yeah she's always down for everything oh yeah, yeah. um all right so I, I like to keep it short and sweet we're, we're around 45 minutes but when so let's talk about principal photography when you're thinking of releasing it how long is the movie going to be if we can get some of that info okay we we start shooting june 25th mm -hmm. uh we shoot for a week and, and then we come scenes. back yeah and then we go to seattle for a week at the end of july so that's when photography is should be pretty fun yeah. uh i mean if anybody is in the area i do have an open set if you just want to come be there we'll give you responsibility um i like people to learn i like people to be a part of something instead of just hey you know it's a closed set you can't be here that type of thing right um we are looking to release it in halloween on uh transact on like amazon and uh, transactional vod so smart be looking for that how long will the film be Oh, yeah, right now the script is one hundred and twenty-seven <laughs> pages. Yes, so it's it over just, two, that's two and a half hours. Later, it gentlemen. just kept going. It was it was two hours is what it would clock out to be, but I think it's going to be about an hour and forty minutes, kind of like a right. Bloodlines too. Um, talking shit says Peter, where's your part in the movie? That we wouldn't let him in. There's no so, part. Uh, like, no, stay, there's too many in Connecticut. <laughs> there's some harsh. There's some stunts that Peter, Peter would have to do, and his knees are too bad. Yeah, we thought of you first, but then we're like, Peter won't hold up, so let's just keep him there. <laughs> so we we are casting a character named Jose, yes. right? But you don't speak Spanish, right? Un poquito. <laughs> Un poquito. No, no, no. Yeah. You have to you have to be able to like flutter off in Spanish yeah. like like a cholo, you know. I know my mother is swearing at me all the time. I got those words down. Right. Yeah, yeah. I know um, one line in Spanish. But we actually thought of you for that. I, I, I would love to be in the film. Do, do, if you flew me out, do, Doomsday Crypt. John Henderson. John Henderson, great guy. He has a huge show. He, he basically goes live like every day with wow, tons man. of actors all the time. He always supports all the uh, independent films and uh, and the actors. Yeah, great guy. Says, hey guys, what's up, Peter? What's up, buddy? Cool. Um, so that's it. So you're filming in June. You want to release around Halloween, yes. and you think it's going to be an hour forty five, probably yep. roughly. And yep. you got star studded cast. Yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to go for someone to play Jose, and I can't reveal who it is yet. Fingers but crossed. He was in the the Fast and the Furious uh, franchise, so we'll see. Yeah. yeah, we'll see if that happens. And then, lastly, between us three, yeah. isn't it amazing? Like in the last four or five years, especially me starting with the Avengers, with, with the journey with Vengeance, and so on and so forth. How I think I think all of our hard work paid off, and now look at what Cody's doing now, and you are doing Ryan, and yeah. what Jason Brooks is doing, and That's what funny. Sinai is doing, and what I'm hopefully going to do. I, I, I think like Maybe we've created a family, and we got our little bit of sprinkle of DNA on like the horror slash thriller universe, and I'm just happy that you guys are, are making it. Yeah, I well, mean. 
uh, the one thing me and Cody talked about at the beginning is we we were both going into obviously he did vengeance first, pulled me in for Roseblood. Is like, hey, this isn't necessarily a lane, but I think this can get us to our final destination. So we always talked about let's crank out a bunch of these Jason movies, you know, prove our concept, prove our vision, so people like us, so we can start getting support from the fans to so start doing the movies that we want to do. And it's starting with two fifty nine. I know Cody's got some family friendly movies that we kind of want to veer in through, but we definitely are racking in these fans on this area so we can start getting to those end goals but i mean we're having a blast I, you know i've fallen in love with making these movies i was on i was on set today doing a shoe commercial and the crew came up to me because someone told them that i was filming this movie in a month and it's just amazing to see how you know the horror community kind of wraps around you and, and that alone is what pulls me in because like i've done christmas movies big movies you know worked with big huge stars but like to do these horror films i've never had anyone like do these these type of podcasts or i've never had anyone do a, a movie trailer review and just to watch their excitement really gets me excited to actually make more of these yeah, I, um, real quick, 80s Horror Man, thanks for watching my video. He did a review. Of, he was holding up the um, the Rosebud uh, Blu-ray. I posted it. I uh, was awesome. watching my review on Rosebud. And then, I'm um, jealous. I want mine. Doomsday Crip, a lot of, both of your ship, a lot of talent, that's for sure. Talked about it today. Um, and then I remember it was funny because seeing Cody and, and you, Ryan, and Josh, too, when, like, you, you, I didn't really realize it because I, I'm not from the movie world. I didn't realize yeah. two things. One, how lucky we are that we're on a set that everyone liked to work. I mean, right. everybody said that from Mar to you guys all the way down to David. Everyone's like, that's not normal. I'm like, it's not? It's you not. Know? <laughs> and, and then secondly, he, Ryan was like, do you understand that you have 30 people reviewing your trailer? Not even your movie, your trailer. He's like, yeah. I've never seen that before. And that's just the horror community. I don't yeah. realize how lucky we are that we have fans like that. It's so much fun. I love it. Yeah. We are lucky. And I think we're, we're officially converts to the horror uh, yeah. universe is that um, do we do an upside down cross because we're doing all this weird <laughs> I, I, I am know. not doing an upside down cross it's good <laughs> we're more oh, anyways never mind yeah, let me make sure no that was it I, I keep it short and sweet i thought we had a lot of fun i thought for we sure. really let the fans know what you guys are doing what you're into who's on I the, love the movie which is amazing yeah. uh a little backstory of how ryan's you know this story came about and i'm interested and we, we've been having about 15 to 18 viewers the whole time so i think they're right. interested too. awesome <laughs> Looks good. Awesome! You should you Can't should wait. do this more, Peter. This yeah, is right up your lane. You got no time, man. Yeah, you're Makes the time. you're the king of horror. Well, once you send out all these DVDs, you'll have plenty of time. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I will. I'll have more time. Well, for laugh. So yeah, exactly. We stay busy. That's how it works. We're always moving. Is that so? There's a two fifty nine behind you. Is there? I thought uh, Cody, you had a two fifty nine hanging somewhere. It's it's hidden yeah. behind that picture right up there. Okay. I know. I had to design it a little bit, but I'm like on Apple boxes right now because I don't have like a cool background. Is that Normally the final I'm... poster or will there be more po now that you have? Oh, that's, that's the old poster. That's the short. That's for the short. Yeah. So there'll be a new poster, I'm assuming, with the, oh, some yeah. of the actors. Very different. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even the short's complete. I mean, the, the feature that we're doing is completely different from the short. It doesn't really follow along the same lines. Kind of goes, like I said, into this different story, but I'm excited. Excellent. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out. I'm sure we'll talk later or tomorrow or whatever. Oh, but I'm sure we will. Check it out, 259. Stay tuned on what, Cody? On your – I mean, I'll post it when I can, but where should people stay tuned on it? Um, on Instagram, it's Newton to Newton Productions. Uh, on my Facebook, if you want to. I don't have a page because they took that away from me. And, yeah. So if you watch those two, you'll be able to catch up with a lot of those things. Uh, at Newton to Newton on Twitter, even though I, I don't do Twitter too much. But yeah. – yeah, it'll start to get crazy here soon. And methodical eyes, thank you for the interview, guys. You're very welcome. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys, yeah, appreciate y'all. All right, I'll see you guys. Have a good night. Thanks for coming on. Okay, love you. I love you guys. Love you. Okay.